All right, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the process of applying and manipulating UVs on any kind of polygon geometry within XSI. All right, so the example that we're going to be using for this exercise is the same staff that we had modeled a portion of this over in the games category of this training. So now what we want to do is take a look at how we can use UVs to start to control the way that any kind of a texture is going to flow across this object. And basically, that's what UVs do. They give some kind of a structure to the way that any kind of a 2D image is going to flow across this 3D geometry. Now one thing to note is that by default as you're starting to model an XSI, any kind of an object has no UVs applied to it. So once you have any kind of geometry modeled and you start to apply any sort of texture, you're not going to see anything because there is no UV structure to this geometry until we start to manually apply this. So what we can do is select the object and with that selected, let's go to Get Property, and we're going to apply a Texture Projection. So if you take a look at this menu, we actually have several kinds of projections to choose from. And really, this is going to be dependent on your actual geometry itself. So if you have something that's a little bit longer and more cylindrical, you can start with a cylindrical projection to begin with. Or if you need, just need something that projects from the side, maybe from the front, or from the top down, you can start there as well. So in our case, let's maybe try something that starts as a projection from the top down. So that's going to be this XZ projection. You can click on that, and if you look very carefully, you can see this little green object that's now been applied around this mesh. Right Now this is referred to as a texture support, and basically this texture support is what's holding the UV information for this particular object that it's applied to. So just to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm going to go ahead and just turn the grid off for this 3D view. I'm just going to press the G key on my keyboard, and that will now be a little bit easier to see. So if you want to now take a look at what the UVs for this object look like, now that we have this texture support that's been applied, if we select this piece of geometry and go up to View, we'll go to Rendering and Texturing, and take a look inside the Texture Editor. Or if you want to use your keyboard shortcut, that's going to be Alt-7. All right, so here is the texture editor, which is actually letting us see what the UVs look like on this piece of geometry. So if we were able to see this a little bit easier, I always find it to be fairly useful to actually tint this background a little bit darker. That's going to be this little three colored icon right over here. All right, so here is what the UVs for this object look like. So basically, this texture in the background is being projected onto this UV structure. And if you take a look in some sort of a textured view, you can actually see now how these are flowing across this 3D geometry. All right, And if we don't necessarily like this for whatever reason, we can always come back and modify this. So one way is if we were to, let's see, go back to a uh, actual object selection mode. So I'll just tap my space bar. And if I select this texture support and press Enter on my keyboard, I also have access to the options that control the way that this was actually applied. So if maybe this from the top down projection wasn't a good way to start, we can adjust the texture support direction from here, or we can completely change the projection method altogether. So if we want something that is a little bit more cylindrical that wraps around this uh, actual base of the staff, we can do that as well. And you should see those UVs update automatically here within the texture editor. All right. So let's go ahead and just take this back to the way we had it. We'll take it back to a planar projection. All right. So you'll notice right now that these letters and words that are on the texture itself are being stretched quite a bit. And that's because we have what is this long, slender piece of geometry. But the texture support, you can see, is stretching that geometry across this entire image. So what we could do is maybe just select this texture support, switch to my scale tool, and we can start to actually scale this texture support out and move it around and control the way that this texture sits and resides on this object. And what you'll notice is if I were to take my texture editor and we'll try to kind of squeeze it into this viewport as best we can, you'll notice that as I actually start to move this texture support that the texture placement will change. It's really not necessarily changing the texture of the placement or the, the uh, texture itself, it's really just controlling the way that the UVs are being placed on that particular texture. Now we can also adjust the UVs through this texture editor as well. 
So, for example, if I were to come in and start to actually grab some of these UVs, I should be able to manipulate them that way. So let's go ahead and we can use our normal 3D component selections here in the text editor as well. So if I were to press the T key on my keyboard, I can actually tag some of these points here in the texture editor. And if I press the V key, which is the keyboard shortcut to switch to my move tool or my translate tool, you can see I can actually pick up these UVs and move them around. And if you look very closely, you should actually see those UVs changing here in the viewport. All right, so I can press my T key to access those. If I press the Y key on my keyboard, I should be able to select a handful of these polygons here. There we go. And again, press the V key once I'm done. And now I can grab these entire polygons here in the texture editor and move those around as well. And again, you should see those update immediately here in the viewport. So within this texture editor, it does become fairly important to keep a, a good memory of your keyboard shortcuts for using your translate, scale, and rotate tools. So I can press the C key on my keyboard. Now switch to my rotate tool. I can rotate these UVs. Or if I press the X key, I can scale those UVs as well. Now what we can also do within XSI is take some of these UVs and actually start to cut these apart. So one of the things to keep in mind is that in XSI there really is no such thing as a polygon or a UV slicing tool. Instead, what we can do is in the tools menu, or rather in the select menu, if we activate an option called tearing mode, this will start to show these actually polygon, these uh, UV bisectors. And what you should see now is a pretty clear difference once we start to access these tools. So again, if I press the U key on my keyboard, and I can actually do my raycast selection here as well, switch to my move tool, my translate tool, by pressing the V key, you can see that once I have this tearing mode enabled, what I can do is just simply grab some of these UVs and just rip these out. And you can see now I have a UV section that's completely independent of these other two. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this lesson at this point. And what we'll do in our next lesson is actually start to look at how we can start to re-merge some of these UVs back together, as well as a few of these really, really helpful tools that we can find within the text editor to make these really, really nice refined adjustments to the UVs themselves. All right, so we will take a look at those options in this next lesson.